<laughs> hey cruisers, happy holidays and Merry Christmas to all of you. We are very, very jet lagged still, but we're rocking and rolling and sleeping a lot better than we were a few days ago. So it's wonderful to be home. We had an amazing trip on Diamond Princess and we can't wait to tell you all about it today. I'm still swaying from the ship, so if I get a little dizzy and I start moving, don't be surprised. Um, I went back to work for two days this week and I was I would be sitting in my chair and literally just start like leaning to the left and I had no control over it. It was a total trip. Very normal. Happens to me often after a cruise for about a week, but boy is it a trip when you're trying to focus on something and you're sitting still and you start swaying a little bit. But anyway, so we're gonna get into all the fun details in just a moment. I wanted to let you all know that today's episode is sponsored by CruiseLine.com, where you can find reviews, tips, and photos from real everyday cruisers, including us. We will be posting our review probably within a few weeks. I have a lot to do, um, but I will get it written and post it over there. And when I post it, I will post the review on social media as well so you guys can go check it out. If you have questions about our cruise, please feel free to post them in the chat today. We'd absolutely love to answer questions about this particular cruise, about Asia, about Diamond Princess. We'll give priority to those questions. If we have time for general cruise Q&A a little bit later in the chat, we will do that as well, but most likely we'll probably stick with those questions. Um, in the next few weeks, we hope to be announcing our next cruise. I know a lot of you have been asking about that. It's probably not gonna surprise you because I did tell you that I wanted to do this cruise, so you could try to guess and figure it out, but I'm not gonna tell you just yet. We'll do it. We'll do a live stream announcement or some kind of a fun episode announcing it. We'll also come on and do a general cruise Q&A soon as well, so. I hope all of you are having a wonderful holiday. It's beautiful today in California. It's sunny. We're expecting rain on Christmas, but it's been ranging from about 30 degrees in the morning to about 60 or 70 degrees during the day. So it's really pleasant and beautiful. I know that we're spoiled here and many of you are dealing with snow right now. But anyway, Megan, I'm glad you like our holly jolly sign. Yes, I just saw your comment. Um, I got that, I think, at TJ Maxx a few weeks before our cruise and I thought it was so cute and I couldn't wait to show it to you guys. So we popped it in the set. Let's see here, we have our first question coming in from Stacy Finch, and I'm gonna answer it, but then I'm gonna jump into my commentary. Stacy said, what was your favorite port in Asia? Mm. Mr. Cruise Tips TV, I could probably let you answer that one. I wonder if we would say the same thing. I think that, um, would you say Shimizu? Probably? I think I would, but I might, I might go back and forth. It's, it's tough, because they're different, and sometimes it's not easy to compare them. Yeah, it, yeah. as we go through and talk about the ports and the excursions we went on today or activities that we did, we'll kind of explain to you what our impressions were. But I think that Shimizu, um, which is at the base of Mount Fuji, and I posted some photos of Mount Fuji on our social media channels while we were gone, was very special to us because it was not crowded and we didn't actually have an excursion plan. We just walked around and we just met amazing people. The people were unbelievable. We had a blast shopping and eating and just being a family and it was pretty special. So I think that'll come through in the vlogs as well. It was a really great day. So let's talk about the, the ship and then we'll talk about the ports and excursions. And Mr. Cruise Tips TV, feel free to queue up any questions about the ports, this particular ship on the screen and I'll answer them as they come up. So first I wanna talk about the kind of the ship, the process, the embarkation, the beginning of the cruise. Our flight from LAX to um, Yokohama, or excuse me, to Haneda Airport in Tokyo was wonderful. It was something like 11 hours and it was a daytime flight. We all watched like four movies. My, my son probably got in like five or six movies. They fed us three times on the flight, which was unbelievable. We were really well fed. It was crazy. It felt like they were feeding us every two hours. It was like a cruise. And it was just an excellent experience. We landed in, um, in Tokyo relatively late in the afternoon, 4, 4.30 in the afternoon. And we were surprised that it was already getting dark. By the time we got to our hotel at 4.45, 5 o'clock, it was pitch black, which was really sad because we couldn't see very well and it started to pour down rain. Um, but it didn't matter because by the time we got checked into the hotel and changed into our clothes, kind of freshened up a little bit to go back out and explore Chinatown, it was beautiful. The weather was great. It was cold, but so pleasant. And we had an amazing night in Tokyo, in Yokohama, which is right by the cruise port, the Osanbashi cruise port. 
loved Yokohama, really wish we had more time there, but because of my work schedule, we just couldn't fly in a day early or extend. This cruise was really long as it was, and so that's what we had to do, but our hotel was great. We stayed at the Hotel Monterey. For those of you flying into Tokyo and cruising out of Yokohama, the Hotel Monterey includes breakfast and a and Wi-Fi, and we booked that through Expedia. That seems to be the only way you can book it. I went to their website and they referred me to Expedia. It was probably in the neighborhood of $200. The Wi-Fi was really great. The breakfast was delicious. They had Western and Eastern food, and it was just lovely. And we had a view of our cruise ship from the breakfast room. Fantastic. So let's skip over to embarkation day. Embarkation was super smooth. We actually walked from the Hotel Monterey to the Osanbashi cruise port and it was extremely easy to do. Junior even took his own suitcase and rolled it the whole way. It took us maybe 10 to 20 minutes, maybe 20 because we were kind of dilly-dallying around, enjoying the waterfront, talking to people. My son was um, saying konnichiwa to everyone. So every every single group of adorable people that we met would like stop and fawn over him because he was trying to speak Japanese, which was a highlight of the trip in every single country we went to. He adapted to the language instantly, not the whole language, but the, wor the basic words he could learn. And it was unbelievably cute. So that was really fun. The Osambashi Cruise Terminal is probably the most amazing cruise terminal I've ever seen just in the sense that it's extremely unique. It's kind of on a pier, but the pier has sort of has two layers. And on the top, it has grass and all of this natural area, which you can see on our social media account where you can go and you can sit and people can watch the cruise ship depart or just hang out for the day. Non-cruise passengers can hang out for the day. And the lower level is sort of the embarkation area. Embarkation was incredibly smooth. I believe we were on the ship by noon. Um, we were one of the earlier groups to board because we have priority embarkation because we're platinum. And it was smooth like butter, you guys. Just an unbelievable embarkation. And again, all of our vlogs will show all of this. So we got on the ship went up to see our room straight away to get to drop off our backpacks and things. We actually did check our bags through um, through the ship. We carried them on the airplane. That went fine on the trip over. And then we checked them when we got to the terminal. We just didn't need to deal with them. But we wanted to go drop our backpacks, freshen up, wash our hands, whatever. And then um, we checked out our stateroom. We had a beautiful mini suite. Mini suites are so great on Princess and oftentimes they're very affordable. That was the reason that we booked this cruise is that we found an incredible deal. For those of you who haven't heard me talk about the price of this cruise before, our cabin was like maybe $3,200 or something for 12 nights for a mini suite for three people. You guys, that's an incredible deal. That's less than $100 per day for a mini suite with a bathtub, a humongous balcony, a sitting area, two TVs. It was fantastic. We really appreciated having the extra space on this cruise. Not that we really needed it for our stuff because we didn't take much stuff. We needed it to just stretch our legs and everyone could have their own kind of their own space. It was really wonderful. Our son slept in the sofa bed. That was pretty comfortable for him. It was really comfortable. Um, I would say as sofa beds go, it was one of the better ones that we've ever experienced. Um, so the room was great. Funny story. I have to tell you guys this. Okay. I didn't know until a few weeks before the cruise that they had Japanese toilets in the staterooms on Diamond Princess, meaning they are basically the fancy bidet style toilets that you see all over Japan. Um, they are, they, it's really hard to explain these toilets, but they are computerized, they, have, they attached a computerized bidet attachment to the existing toilets. So they had this panel by the sink that you could press to do all of the bidet functionality. The only downside of that was that when they put the bidet seat on the toilet, it, the seat was really, really small, which was weird. Be, and it slanted down, so it was like kind of an uncomfortable toilet seat, if that makes sense. I mean, we're talking like it, it cut the size of the toilet seat in half, which is weird. It's weird. And it's slanted downward. So when you're sitting on the toilet, you're like, kind of like this. It was, it was interesting. So, you know, we, we want to be honest. We want to give you all the information. It was still cool, though. And they even had like a child setting on the toilet. <laughs> so funny. Um, air dryer, hot water on the toilet, you name it. So before I get into the TMI of the toilet anymore, we'll move on to the next topic. But that was really funny. That was crazy. The ship was in excellent condition. Um, it, I do believe it's going in for a makeover soon. I don't know the details of that renovation on the ship, but it, it's in excellent condition. 
we sailed, I think, in 2005, and it looked the same to me. Maybe the carpet in the main, like in the hallways, needs to be replaced, but the carpeting in our room was spotless. Everything in our room looked like it was brand new. So it's held up incredibly well, incredibly well. There were some very unique spots on this ship that I want to talk about. And I just, we spoke about them before our cruise in our Diamond Princess highlights video. But this ship was renovated for the Asian market. And as such, they added some things that they don't have on most of their ships. One of them is um, the Izumi Japanese bath. And if you follow me on Instagram, you saw my Instagram stories where I filmed inside the bath. And we also vlogged about it. But if you would like to go see that, go to our Instagram story that's called Asia Cruise. The whole story has been saved right under my profile and you can watch the whole thing and you'll see some highlights of Izumi. It is a wonderful, wonderful um, area. The only thing I didn't like about Izumi is that the hydrotherapy pool outside, so that big giant round pool with the thatched kind of roof that you see in all the pictures of Diamond Princess was a cold pool. And it was very cold in Japan, so there was no way you wanted to get in it. I got in it to vlog it, and I flew out of there like I was in the, you know, the polar bear swim. It was so cold. But the inside areas were great. Now, if you're on a warm weather cruise, sitting in that hydrotherapy bath might be kind of nice, but I never saw a single human being in it the entire cruise. That tells me they need to make that sucker a hot tub because it was just too cold and no one was taking advantage of it. But the indoor areas on Izumi are wonderful and we vlogged about how they all work. There, It is well worth the $15 for two hours. I can't speak highly enough about Izumi. Now let's talk about the sushi place, Kai. The sushi restaurant Kai was beautiful. It was gorgeous on the inside. Unfortunately, it was not a popular place on the cruise. We rarely saw people dining in there. In fact, most of the time it was empty. So if you've been on a princess cruise and you've seen Sabatini's, it's kind of in that area of the ship and takes up about as much space as the Sabatini's, but it was always empty. I don't know why that is, but I think it's because of the a la carte pricing. It's not a place where you can go and have everything you want for $20. It's a la carte and everything is a little bit pricey. We actually didn't even try it because of the price and also because of the fact that it was mostly raw fish types of sushi. They didn't have Japanese food and sushi. They just had sushi and a few appetizers. So we opted not to enjoy Kai. We just had so many other things we wanted to do. Moving on, I'm trying to think if there's anything else unique on this ship. I know the green tea ice cream was unique. You probably saw that on our Instagram and Facebook feeds. Delicious green tea soft serve. They also have chocolate and vanilla. Totally awesome. Smart thing to do for a cruise to Asia. It was wonderful, and I saw so many people enjoying it. Um, the service on this ship was, I would rate it a 10 out of 10. Almost every single person that we came in contact with, from our room steward to the people who served us coffee in the morning, to our dining staff were exceptional. We're talking top of the line service. Um, it was very interesting that Princess did hire a lot of um, Japanese workers on this ship. So normally you don't see that as much on a, um, on a Princess cruise or on any cruise, but it made perfect sense because obviously they've got people cruising from Japan and they need people who speak Japanese. And so that was really nice and lovely to interact with them and get to know them. That was unique about this cruise. The food was very good. Um, I think the first few nights in the dining room, we found that they were still kind of hitting their stride. I don't know if maybe they switched chefs or something, but the first few nights, um, weren't our favorite nights, but then the food substantially improved over the course of the cruise and everything was really, really good. Um, our wait staff was just wonderful. They anticipated our needs. Like I always like horseradish with my food, which is really weird. And they were super nice about that. They were, this, the drink service was fantastic. Everything was just wonderful from a service perspective. I never met a rude employee that I could think of. Did you meet any anyone that was lukewarm or no? Fantastic. Um, some of my favorite entrees on this cruise, the, interestingly enough, the jerk, the jerk chicken was phenomenal. I had it one night. It was really, really good. Um, I'm trying to think of a few other things. I can't really remember right now, but of course we did our, flu our food slideshow and that um, will show you every single item that we could possibly eat. Um, Junior did experience his birthday on this cruise and it was probably one of the coolest birthdays a kid could ever wish for. Um, you may have noticed that he spent a lot of time in Camp Adventure, which is the kids club on board. He's getting to that age where he's more brave and he's trying it out and this time 
it, it was his it was his place. He found his people. He met friends from all over the world. The staff was absolutely wonderful. They made him a poster on his birthday. Everyone signed it. He had probably three or four cakes delivered to him by different people who met him on the ship. And we had the wonderful opportunity of having dinner with the captain on this cruise and on his birthday. What happened was we ran into the captain at the coffee shop and we had sailed with Captain Stefano Rivera on Star Princess and we had toured his bridge. So we remembered one another and he invited us to dinner. He didn't even know it was our kid's birthday, um, but that was pretty crazy cool to sit with a captain and talk to him over dinner. So when you're ranking special things in your life, as a 10 year old, I hope he appreciates how impactful and wonderful that was, but boy was he, was a captain a sweetheart. He was, uh, he arranged for a cake for him. He was just so affectionate to him throughout the cruise and it was very, very special to have that experience. So let's continue on. We talked about the food. L shall we answer a few questions before we, um, before we go, yeah, let's answer some questions and then we'll skip into ports and excursions. So Wesley Anson said, how has the Diamond Princess aged? It's aged beautifully, Wesley. It's in really good condition. I think the carpet needs to be replaced in the main areas. Some of the furnishings were a little out of date, but I would say as they go, this one was really top condition. Um, they've done a good job. Becky, we flew economy class the entire way there and back. We did fly um, on the way over. We flew main cabin extra. All that means is that you're in the regular cabin, but you're towards the front. You have two extra inches of leg room approximately, and you get free cocktails. And that's it. But that was wonderful. Having those two extra inches of legroom was great, but it was only something like $60 extra per person. It was not business class. We couldn't afford that. Sandra said, Sherry, how did you like dining on authentic Asian food versus Americanized Asian food? Okay, Sandra, this is where it gets funny. We were talking about this when we got back and we made an effort to try the food that we thought would be the best in every area. So in Kyoto, we had ramen. In, um, in Hong Kong, we had our guide take us for authentic dim sum. And then in um, Vietnam, we had pho. Okay. I will tell you that it's not different. To me, it was the same. And I think I've actually, in some cases, have had better here. Um, the dim sum was okay. I think our guide might've been a little too adventuresome with some of the things he ordered. And as we know, Americans aren't as keen on eating things with bones and tendons and chewy bits in them. And he was pretty good about not ordering that stuff because we told him we weren't that adventuresome. But there were some weird elements to some of that food. Um, the ramen that we had in Kyoto was very good. But if you, if you live in a metropolitan area and you've been to a really good ramen shop that serves authentic Japanese ramen, you've had ramen that's just as good. I would say the pho that we had in Vietnam was probably the best, the best soup you could ever have in your entire life. <laughs> You'll see it in the vlogs, it's pretty funny. But again, that was probably the one thing that really stood out. We didn't get a ton of opportunity to eat on shore, so we would have one meal you know, a day. We didn't have all three meals, so we didn't have as much time. Okay, let's see. Night Audit said, question for you. As you said, this would be the longest cruise you've been on. Would you do more 10 days or stick to seven days? Night Audit, I gotta tell you, it's gonna be really hard for me to do seven days now. I will do seven days though. The, I think our next cruise may be a one weeker, but it's so difficult for me to relax um, on a seven day cruise because I, um, I run a little bit type A and I think I'm not, I'm not really relaxed until day three and then my cruise is halfway over. So I prefer 10 days or longer, but I do think we'll mix it up. And I think that there'll be times when we do seven days still. All right. Nancy says, how is it coming back and then having the holidays right away? I bet it's challenging. Yeah. So Nancy, what we did is we tried to plan that part of it ahead. Um, a little bit difficult with Christmas presents and things like with shipping and stuff like that. That's actually been a little bit challenging, but we just decided not to let it become a stressor and we planned this a month in advance. So it's actually been pretty nice because I think that we've avoided that major stress period and we're pretty ready. I will tell you though that go my work has been crazy for the last few days. I had no idea that it was going to be so hectic at work. Being busy in my line of business is an excellent problem to have, but it hasn't been relaxing for me at all. We've been like, I've been really, really having to be on. And so 
and I'm working on Christmas Eve too. So it's it's that part of it is a little bit hard, but holidays in general, we're cool. We're not traveling for the holidays, we're staying home. Gifts are good, and I think we're ready. I think we're in the mood and in the mode. All right, say hey, said how did junior editor enjoy the kids club? Oh my gosh, I think I already, you probably wrote this question beforehand, but it was, it was amazing for him. It was an experience of a lifetime. He had friends from other countries, Australia, Malaysia, all over the world, what? He was the international ladies man in the kids club, that's what he was. Yeah. It was crazy. It was crazy. He was on fire, guys. He, He's not listening, is he? No. Okay. You guys, he wanted to get back to the kids' center so badly sometimes that he would spring out of bed, look at his watch, and get angry if he had slept through the time that he needed to get ready, get fed, and get there. He'd be like, <gasps> it's 8 o'clock. And so that was really new for us because Mr. Cruz, Tips TV, and I are not used to that with him. And this was very, very different. I mean, there were there were lots of times when we were like, okay, he's gone. Like, let's go walk around the deck. What do we do? Let's go clean the cabin. Like, it was really, really different for us, but it was an amazing experience for him. And he grew and he changed and he matured on that trip as a result. And he met some wonderful friends. Okay, Melissa, our cruise was 12 days long. Mark asked, what was my favorite meal on ship or land? Mark, I think I already covered it, but um, the pho in Vietnam at, at a place called Pho 2000 in Ho Chi Minh City was just the bomb. And um, we also had a really lovely meal at Mini Beach in Nha Trang, uh, Nha Trang in Vietnam. Mr. Cruz TV, you really like that food, huh? The food we had in Vietnam on the beach, wasn't that good? The really fresh, like, everything was just amazing. And you, when you're on the beach, food is just better. We didn't even know that lunch was included at Mini Beach, but boy, was it delicious. So that was good. Um, let's see here. Heather said, how does this princess ship compare to other ones you've been on? It's bigger, Heather. Um, we've been on this ship before. Sapphire and Diamond are bigger. They were our first princess ships, but they're a little bit bigger and a little bit nicer than the Grand Class Star, Grand, and Golden, just a little bit. James said, did most of the staff speak English? What was the most common language used? Yes, James, on the ship, all of the staff did speak English, but you had a lot of people who were bilingual in Japanese on this one, and there were some Chinese speaking as well because of the, the amount of people from other countries. This ship was filled with mostly Americans. There were over a 1,000 Americans, but a very, very, very large percentage of people were from other Asian countries and Australia. So you would meet people in one day. You would meet someone from Australia, Singapore, Hong Kong, China, Japan, lots of Asian countries as well but the great majority were American. It didn't feel that way though to us. We didn't feel like we were seeing American people and I don't know why that is, but it was the case. Um, Melissa, I will um, talk about the shore excursions in a minute in great detail. Seth, my slurp was pretty good. Mr. Cruise Tips TV did not slurp. I could not do it. I, I couldn't, couldn't do it. He's, I mean. he's got very high amounts of eating etiquette. And our guide even told us, she's like, you need to slurp. You know, she's Japanese. She, so she said it with, you know, a little bit more of a Japanese accent. And so I tried, Seth, but I was like, you know, I was uncomfortable, but I did try. And the ramen was really good. Um, it just, it didn't blow my mind, but it was really good. Okay. Bonnie said, how about the Asian food on the ship? Bonnie, there was a little bit of Asian food on the ship. You can tell they kind of tried to insert an entree here and there, and it was okay. It was nothing crazy special. Um, ah, Scott said, how does your routine change when you're on a longer cruise? Scott, that's a really interesting question. I have to think about that for a moment. I think um, we relax more. I think we do nothing a little bit more, which for us is not common. I would say that we didn't, we didn't have a lot of downtime on this cruise, but... There were times when we would just sit and stare out of a window, and that's a luxury to have. So I'll think about that, though. Um, Elizabeth said, what was Junior Editor's favorite part of the trip? Definitely being in Camp Adventure with his friends. I think he liked that more than the port days. Sometimes the port days were really exciting and fun for him, and sometimes he didn't even want to get off the ship. He would have probably, on, in Hong Kong, he probably would have been happier if we had left him on the ship. He, he would, was miserable he would the whole say time. say something like, yeah, I'm having a great time. Can we go back now? Yeah. Yeah, and he would just say that to be polite to the guide. But he really meant, like, this sucks. Can I go back now? Like, he was, he was, 
into it. And you guys, I can't blame him. It was so fun. They had a different activity every hour for these kids. They'd be playing Wii Dance one minute. They'd be playing an Uno card game. He came home with a packing cube full of crafts, hats that he'd um, painted, shirts. I, I can't even speak highly enough of the Princess Kids Club on this ship. It was out of control good. Um, Valerie, all shows were in English. Um, Bonnie, how much laundry did you do? Oh, Bonnie, you know me well. A lot. At probably five or six loads, Bonnie. Because we packed carry-on only. I, I will tell you, I'm so thankful we did. Because even though we checked our baggage on the way back, because you have to internationally coming back, we were so happy to be traveling light, but we did laun laundry frequently. And we were getting dirty. You know, you go out and you're on subways all day and things, you feel filthy and your clothes feel filthy. So we washed more than we needed to because we wanted to do that. But I like doing laundry on a ship. I'm a weirdo, I know that. Okay, let's see. Haha. <laughs> you know, um, Michelle DeBoard, he hasn't kept, kept in touch with anyone since the cruise because what we realized is that 10 year olds don't know how to do that. I was thinking, I'm like, oh, I wish somebody could like, I wish we could keep in touch, but the parents would have to talk and we didn't see the parents that much. So the kids don't have like social media accounts. My son doesn't have any of that stuff. I know that. And I don't think those kids did either. So they haven't, which is kind of sad. All right. Amber, welcome to the live stream. Andrew said, did you get the drink package and how much? No, definitely not, Andrew. And I maybe had two drinks a day. I purchased them. Also, Andrew, regarding the drinks, I also bought a bottle of gin on the cruise. A 375 milliliter bottle of gin cost me 20 bucks and I got a lot of drinks out of that. I would just get grapefruit juice in the morning for breakfast and make a gin and grapefruit with a club soda. And it was great. Um, no, Connie, I didn't read my book. I didn't even open it. I wanted to read it on the plane, but it was too dark. They kept turning off the lights and I didn't want to turn on my overhead light. Okay, James, very good question. James said, were US dollars accepted everywhere and was tipping different? Excellent question, James. No, US dollars were only accepted in Vietnam. Vietnam, they were very good about taking jo uh, US dollars. Tipping was very, very different. In fact, um, there was absolutely no tipping in Japan. That's a big no-no. In Hong Kong, it's a little bit more, um, in Taiwan and Hong Kong, it's a little bit more okay if you wanna do it. So we did tip a little bit in Hong Kong and Taiwan, but absolutely not at all in Japan. We didn't even tip our guide. We took our subscriber's advice, I think it was Megan, who told me that we should get our guide a personal gift. We did, we gave her a necklace and a personal greeting card and some bracelets, and she loved that, um, but we didn't tip at all. But no, US dollars were not accepted. We had to get currency in every country. That was weird, having to do that. So now I have leftover currency from some of the countries, Ah, and I didn't change it back, not a lot. But in um, Japan, I think I got $400 out, three or $400 out. When I got to the airport, that's what people told me to do is get your, go to the ATM in the airport, get your cash there because you need it. And we did need cash. I'm so glad that we did because we went to a restaurant, we needed it. We used our credit card to buy the airport limousine bus to get to our hotel. But other than that, you needed cash quite a bit. Okay, um, Angie, yes, the time that your kids go to the kids club is included in your cruise fare. There is no extra charge except for late night babysitting from 10 p.m. to 1 p.m. The kids club hours on this ship were 9 a.m. to noon. Then you had to pick up your child between the hours of 12 and 2. The staff takes a break. Then the kids can go back from 2 to 5. You have to pick them up at 5. And then the staff takes a break from 5 to 7. Then they're open again from 7 p.m. to 10 p.m. And then you have to get them at 10 or you pay for late night babysitting. Um, on some nights they have dinner with the kids. Our son had dinner with the kids club twice. Both times it was offered he took he took advantage of it and went and had pizza with them. So great question. All right so I think now we should start talking about unless there's any more questions right now let's start talking about the ports and the excursions. I hope I'm not boring you guys too much. Um, let me see here. In Yokohama, we didn't do an excursion. We didn't have enough time, but we absolutely loved it. We've already talked about that. I would love to go back to Tokyo and spend some more time. That was definitely something on my wish list. Um, our first port on this cruise was a little port called Shimizu. Shimizu is, Shimizu is a beautiful little place in Japan that is the base of Mount Fuji. Spoiler alert, if you haven't seen our social media, that port blew our minds. Um, we thought we might get a small chance of seeing Mount Fuji on this particular cruise, a small chance. 
And to our surprise, we woke up early in the morning, walked up onto the decks, and it was brilliantly sunny. The entire mountain was in view, and it was it, it took your breath away. People were just standing there and not even speaking. You would look up at it. It's this beautiful snow-capped 12,000-foot peak, highest peak, I believe, in Japan. It is an active volcano, and it is absolutely stunning. The view went away after a few hours, so all the people who went on excursions to see Mount Fuji, as expected, they did not get to see the mountain, but it came back into view later in the evening through the clouds, and it was life-changing, beautiful. It's enormous, and it's so peaceful looking and so beautiful. So that was a very big highlight. In Shimizu, I'm gonna leave the vlogs and the social media stuff, you can kind of see what we did there. It's just the most precious little place. We didn't do an excursion, we just went to this plaza nearby, we made friends with shopkeepers, we had wonderful food. It was just an amazing day, taking a tea moment. All right, okay. I'll get to your question, Glenn and Gwendolyn and Becky and Scott in just a few, um, in just a few moments. Um, Osaka was great. We rented a guide, rented? Did I say rented? We arranged or hired a guide, a private guide for the day from a website called Triple Lights Japan. And she was wonderful. We paid about $300 for 10 hours to have this guide who took us from Osaka to Kyoto. We had a wonderful time. Kyoto and Osaka were far more crowded than we anticipated. We didn't realize it was going to be, especially um, Kyoto, we didn't realize it was going to be so covered in people because, you know, silly, naive us. We watch shows all the time about Kyoto and we think it's the Gion district is just this quiet little area and it was just bustling with people, but it was very special. Um, so that's what we did in Osaka and Kyoto. In Taiwan, we did a cool excursion through the ship. We went to a hot springs resort and soaked in hot springs pools on a resort property. And then we went to the Yelu Geo, Geo Park, which you've seen on our Instagram and Facebook feeds. I actually think that the hot springs were miraculous and wonderful for us. I think that the one that we got into was medicated in some way because our son's little rash on his hands completely went away immediately and hasn't come back. And I don't know if it was the cruise or if it was the hot springs, but it was crazy and it was so relaxing. If you're going to Taiwan, I highly recommend that you book that tour with the ship. You can always ask me. In Hong Kong, by that time, by the time we got to Hong Kong, we were getting pretty tired. Even though there were sea days sprinkled in, we were still dealing with jet lag and we were dealing with very intense port days. So Hong Kong day, we were tired. We also arranged for a guide, but that day we only had a half day guide. And our guide took us to some wonderful places. I think I think we should have probably listened to our subscribers in Hong Kong. We could have done that on our own. We didn't so much need a guide. I'm glad that we did it because we didn't know our way around and things took a lot longer than we thought. But we didn't go to Victoria Peak. We just didn't really actually have time to do it all. So that was that was good. It wasn't Hong Kong wasn't really my favorite port, but it was very special and beautiful and I loved seeing the city. I'd like to go back. And then we went to Vietnam, two different ports. We went to <laughs> to Nha Trang, which was kind of a beachy city. And that was beautiful. Very sad though in Nha Trang, we met up with our guide and we had to walk through a small portion of the city to get to um, our speedboat to go on our excursion. And there was a terrible mudslide there recently where 21 people died and there was still mud and debris in the streets. And it was very, very, so it was very sobering and sad to kind of <clears throat> walk through that before we got to our excursion, sorry. <clears throat> But in Na, Na Trang, what we did that day is we booked our excursion through Shipmate app. And this, the excursion was called Amazing Snorkeling, but the wind kicked up that day. So the first place that we went to go snorkeling had a really strong current. And as soon as we jumped in, we got like swept away. So we immediately swam back to the dock and just kind of hung out and did not snorkel. And then we got whisked by speedboat to this place called Mini Beach, which is phenomenal. And I'm wondering if you can maybe book it on your own without having to do it through a tour. And Mini Beach is basically like a little, it's like a little restaurant um, and a bunch of beautiful beach chairs and drink service and stuff on a private cove. Great swimming, really special, wonderful day for our family and awesome food. All of that was included. And then we had, our guide just said, 
hey, tell us when you want to go back and you can stay here as long as you want and then I'll just take you back to the ship. And that's what he did and he was wonderful. And we did, by the way, use US dollars there for tipping and purchases and that was just fine. And then our last port was Ho Chi Minh City, also known as Saigon. We had um, arranged for a guide through um, a forum where we had booked an excursion with a bunch of other people. It was so cheap. It was $60 per person. And we went on a full day tour of Ho Chi Minh City. So it took about an hour and a half to get from, um, from Phu Mi. Fumi, yeah, Fumi, the port to Ho Chi Minh City was a pretty long ride, but it was all included, and we went and had coffee at the rooftop of the Rex Hotel. We went on a really thrilling rickshaw ride. Posted a photo of that today on Instagram and Facebook. Um, in the city, the city is very chaotic, quite dirty, and just the, the amount of scooters per capita is crazy, and there's basically no traffic rules. So that was thrilling. We walked through a market. We went to the War Museum. We had lunch at Pho 2000, really great day, excellent, very good tour. They were very careful about making sure we got back to the port on time. So those were all of our excursions and a little bit about the port. And you all will see all of that information in our vlogs. So I'm done rambling for the day, folks. I'm just going to answer questions for the rest of the time here. Um, Glenn wants to know if we needed visas for any of the countries. Yes, we needed a visa for Vietnam. The, the cruise line, the cruise ship from the very beginning said, we take care of this for you. They take your passports early in the cruise. They give you a landing card. They take your passports away for several days. And then all you need is your landing card to get off the ship in Vietnam. And that ha we needed that for two days, but they took care of everything. They did charge us for that. They said they were going to charge $56 per person, but I think they charged 31 Okay. Gwendolyn said, do you have to stay with your laundry while it's washing and drying? No, you don't, Gwendolyn. And the wash and dry times pop up on the machine so you know right when to come back. Um, but you want to set a timer on your watch so you can come back right in time. Um, Becky said, could you use credit cards in ports? In some places, Becky, you absolutely could. Japan is not as credit card friendly. We used um, we use Japanese yen in most in cash in most cases in um, in Japan, but we did use credit cards at times. Scott says, were the Asians in awe of your beauty and was there a lot of flirting that you noticed? No, not at all. The only thing that was funny, Scott, is I felt tall and I never feel tall. I'm five foot zero, but I can tell you walking down the street, I was not, I was no longer the shorty in the room. So that was different, but no, no one, no, no, none of that happened. Um, Dipshipka said, how was the weather different between countries? Excellent question. It was dramatically different between countries. It was unseasonably cold in Japan, bundled up in jackets with scarves, probably 40 degrees in Osaka, very, very cold in Japan. Um, most days it was pretty chilly. It was very sunny and beautiful in our first port, Shimizu, but then Osaka and Kyoto were very cold. Um, so yeah, it was, it was interesting. And then Taiwan and Hong Kong, I would say they were mild, somewhat rainy. So then you're, the, the temperature was up by about 15 degrees. So you were still wearing a jacket, but you didn't need it as much. We got very cold on the bus in Taiwan, but that was more because the bus driver insisted on running the air conditioner and everybody was really mad um, because we had all just gone to the hot springs and some of us still had wet hair from the showers and everyone was wearing jackets. They had brought jackets, but they were blaring the air conditioning and it was probably, I don't know, when we got up to the mountains to go see some hot springs, it was probably about 40 degrees and they were running the air. It was too cold. Um, Na Trang and Ho Chi Minh City were very hot and humid. So we're talking equatorially warm. And then I failed to mention Singapore, which is where we got off the ship. Singapore was the hottest port, extremely sunny down by the equator. I should say um, Vietnam is not really as close to the equator. I'm sorry about that. But they were very warm. But Singapore was hot and beautiful. In Singapore, unfortunately, we had to, um, our tour was canceled because our flight was at 345 and they won't let you do a pre-flight um, tour if your flight is before 430. So they canceled it on us. Turned out to be a blessing because Junior got sick, as you guys know, and he was, he had a fever. And so we had to be really, really careful with him that day. So we spent the whole day in the airport and we filmed an entire episode and on how awesome the airport is because it is mind blowing. If you've ever been to Singapore, you know what I'm talking about. Crazy. So good. All right. Um, Becky, we had a balcony cabin, a mini suite. 
Um, <laughs> so Kelsa said, did the plastic food displays help in Tokyo? We didn't, you know, kind of a little bit. That was really funny, Seth. In Chinatown, like, you're right, they would have like, like a bowl of noodles, like, fossilized. It was really funny. So yeah, in fact, we try, we sort of chose our restaurant based on photos that they had in the window. Um, uh, Michelle DeBoer, did you try a new drink that was different for a Japanese cruise that you ended up loving? I feel like I did try something new and I can't remember what it was. Oh, um, it wasn't a Japanese drink per se, but I did have a drink that was recommended to me by our subscribers. It's called the Beverly Hills Iced Tea and it's really strong and has like four different types of liquor in it. So I asked them to make it less sweet and it was amazing. So I like that one. Yi Chang, no night market in Taiwan. We were so exhausted from the day that we didn't walk over there. We could have walked, it was a 15 minute walk, but we were just too tired. I was, I was bummed, but that's how pretty much every day went. And because of the jet lag, we were in bed by 10 p.m. every night. We were really tired. Um, Jill said, how long does it take to get your land legs after a 12 day cruise? Jill, I don't know, because I still don't have mine. I'm swaying like crazy, Jill. I don't know why it's happening. Okay, yes, and the green tea ice cream, the soft serve on the ship was absolutely amazing. You're right, it was so good. Anne said, do you miss the ship? More than anything, Anne. We miss the ship so much. I would go repeat this cruise tomorrow if I could. It was so fun. The traveling on the way back was very difficult. We had a really rough flight coming home but the cruise itself was a dream. It was totally different than anything we'd ever done, but it was comforting to know that we had our princess ship to come back to every night, and we know princess as a product so well, and we love it so much that it was like home. So it was a really nice, comfortable way to explore, get out of our comfort zone, but also to be able to come back to our comfort zone when we needed to. Um, yes, David, I would be happy to do that. David said, can you give a quick review of the Princess Medical Center and how it worked with your travel insurance? So David sounds like he's been following along and knows that we had to take our son to the medical center on the last day. He spiked a fever at very quickly and had a sore throat and we were traveling the next day, so we felt that it was very important to take him in. David, the way that it works is you must pay up front for the medical center. Your travel insurance is irrelevant on the cruise. You will be billed to your stateroom account for the charges. The charge for our visit to, to the doctor, and he did see a doctor, was $128, and that included some Tylenol. So the v medical visit started at 94 and the medication was on top of that. I think that's very reasonable. So I have a bill charged to my account for $128. What they do... David is they give you a um, they give you a, a sheet to give to your insurance company with your diagnosis code on the bottom and then you make your claim on your own through your travel insurance provider not your normal medical insurance provider so I have to find out how to make a claim through AIG and I will it's not a whole lot of money but I am going to do it because I want to report back to you guys on how it works Gwen says how long did the flight back take Glenn, we had two flights. It was it was rough, I will tell you. It took us about 30 hours to get home. Um, we flew from Singapore to LAX. We couldn't get a direct flight. It wasn't it wasn't possible. We flew from Singapore to Taiwan. Had a three and a half hour layover, and didn't get on our next flight until midnight. And then we got home at 7:45 p.m. to LAX the next day. So that's the first flight was four hours. The second flight was 11 hours, so it was 15 hours of flying, but keep in mind, we got off the ship at 9 a.m. to go to the Singapore airport, and we didn't get on our flight until 3.45, so it was very long. Um, the second flight was horrible. We, we, the flight itself was great. The service was great. There was some bad turbulence. Our seats were comfortable on EVA airways. The staff was fabulous, but we could not sleep, and Junior, he would fall asleep, and he was sick, he had a fever, and so he was uncomfortable. He would fall asleep, and then he'd start jerking and kicking, and he would, we would try to nod off, and then he'd wake us up. So we were at the end of our physical limit by the time we got home. But I managed to get enough sleep. 
on the plane towards the end of the flight to revive enough to make the drive all the way home. And um, we had a great time on the drive home. We talked, we chatted, we recapped the trip. No one tried to fall asleep in the car. Even our son, we kept him awake because we wanted to all come home and crash. And then I got a good six hours of sleep before I went to work the next day. And I felt great. I felt great ever since. I'm just still swaying. Um, Carol, we did have pretty nice weather on the cruise. We did have some rain but it, and, and a lot of grayness. Japan, except for the port of Shimizu, Japan was very gray. Um, Yokohama was very gray. Osaka and Kyoto were very gray and just very cold. But otherwise, it was really, it was good weather. It, it didn't rain the whole time. So to me, that's good weather. Um, yes, Stephanie, we did use Princess Easy Air for booking our flights. It was excellent. I priced it out. It was cheaper than booking on my own. It was a no-brainer. If it's cheaper, I'm booking it through Princess. And the um, you could make changes to your flights up to 45 days before the cruise. You paid for it on the Princess website. It was just fantastic. So yeah, we sure we sure did. Mr. Christmas TV, you're doing such a good job of keeping me fed with questions. Yeah, Seth, I know the airport in Singapore is amazing. Okay, um, let's see here. Ray Hunter Music said, does medical insurance exist for cruise passengers? You have to buy travel insurance, Ray Hunter Music. It's the only way. If you live in another country and your insurance is comprehensive and covers you when you're traveling, then maybe, but in the U.S. it certainly doesn't. Okay. Yeah, Sydney, I did go straight to work after that trip. It was a difficult decision. I could have taken another day, but I took so much time off work for the trip that I tr decided just to go for it. And I'm really glad that I did because it was it was busy and I needed to be there. And it shouldn't be that busy at this time of year, but it was, so yeah. Okay. Um, yeah, Seth, I'd love to see the pool at Maria, Marina Bay Sands. Um, Seth, was that the one that they showed in, um, in Crazy Rich Asians where they had the party on the rooftop? Let me know, because I watched that movie and it was really it was really funny. Okay. Um, no, we didn't go, Anne, we didn't go to Mandalay Bay and the Botanic Gardens. We didn't go anywhere except the airport because our son was sick. But we would have wanted to go to Gardens by the Bay if that's the one you're talking about. Yeah, Jim, Changi was an amazing one. It was so good, so good, so good, so good. All right, let's see what other questions we have here. Um, Dip Shipka said, when will the vlogs go up? I don't know, Mr. Chris TV, what do you think? When do you think day one or, or the pre-cruise vlog will go up? A week? Maybe or, on Thursday. Maybe but, Thursday. You know, we're so busy with all the holiday stuff. It, it could know. take a while. It's been hard. Just getting unpacked and getting the laundry done has been hard. I'm trying to think of what day it is today. Oh, it's Saturday. Okay. Pro we'll shoot for Thursday, but Dib Shipka, if it doesn't go up Thursday, then probably next Thursday. And that will probably be our pre-cruise vlog where we're doing LAX to Tokyo and then the night before the cruise. And then the week after that will be our day one vlog where we're getting on the ship. So we did do a pre-cruise um, one. Stacy said, are you making your next cruise announcement today? No, Stacy, we're not. I still have to finalize some things, but it should be either in one, it should be one to two weeks from today. And we'll probably do a live stream again next weekend depending on how things go this week and how everybody's feeling. Okay. <laughs> C. Ray said, I'm a new cruiser and I didn't realize I wouldn't be able to walk after getting off the cruise. How long does it take to get your land legs? Yeah, sometimes C. Ray, you don't have that happen at all. For me, it takes about a week and it really gets worse um, when I'm sitting down. Um, so I think you're going to be fine in one week. If not, you know, you visit your doctor, but you should be fine. Ray Hunter Music said, did you get any Japanese beer? I didn't have Japanese beer, Ray Hunter Music, but I did have um, Vietnamese beer, and boy, was that good. Delicious. I had three bottles of it in one day. It was so good. Sydney said, did vlogging this trip hinder the enjoyment of the trip at all? No, Sydney, it didn't, but I will tell you that we took days off. Um, it was one of those things, Sid, where I felt like we had to take days off. We were so tired from the ports that on the sea days, we just didn't do anything. We didn't do anything that you guys would want to see. We would wake up, we would go to breakfast, we would stare at each other, we would talk about the day, we'd get some coffee, I would take a nap. There was nothing to film. So I think because we took those full days off, when we did vlog, it was really fun and we felt like we had something to show, but I would say that we skipped vlogging at least three or four days. It was just, we had to. The level of, um, 
<clears throat> the level of exhaustion, just getting there, it was not, it, there's just no way we, I could have physically done it. I'm getting too old, man. I just can't do it. All right. Sandra said, how have you adjusted from all the time zone changes? Sandra, today we're finally adjusting. Um, it was actually, I would say it was a little bit more difficult going over to adjust because I couldn't sleep for the first two or three days, barely at all. My body just wanted to be up, but coming back, I, I got back on schedule immediately. A little bit harder for my husband and son. Um, my husband couldn't sleep for a few days and my son was popping out of bed too early. So it's been okay. I feel better than I think I expected I would though. I can tell you that. Okay. Um, Matthew said, tell me about the experience on the Sky Lounge behind the funnel while at sea. What's the view and experience like? I don't know what you're talking about there, Matthew. Um, the Sky Lounge behind the funnel. Do you mean um, like the open deck? I'm not familiar with it. Matthew, let me know what you're talking about. And Mr. Christophs TV, keep an eye on that for you. Um, no, I don't think, Angie, that the land legs thing is related to seasickness. I don't have much seasickness, and I've never... Um, I always have the, the swaying when I get back. Not always, but most times I have swaying. So I don't know that they're really related. Eric said, hi, Sherry. Is getting the travel insurance through Carnival the extra insurance you get when you book with them directly cover for medical expenses of traveling to Mexico? Eric, it should, but we do recommend booking with an outside provider um, because it's cheaper and you might get better coverage. So look at Travel Guard, look at AIG, look at tripinsurance.com and make sure you cover yourself for the days before you're traveling, okay? Matthew, I still don't know where you mean because I don't know of a place that has that lounge name. Um, if you're talking about the aft pool, that was really pretty, but I'm not sure about that lounge. Maybe you're talking about the sanctuary. Um, just not too sure. Okay. Peggy said, I really enjoyed your Instagram photos. Thank you, Peggy. We tried really hard to post a lot. Um, the internet on the ship was not good, guys. We had a really hard time with, um, with uploading Instagram stories, so I had to wait till I got Wi-Fi on land so everything would upload when I was on land in a, in a restaurant or wherever I could get free Wi-Fi. But if you guys want to see a sneak peek of the trip, go watch our Instagram story called Asia Cruise. It is really fun just to see little tiny video clips. They're all video clips. So that's a good way to get a peek. Okay. Let's see here. Hmm. <laughs> Thanks, Angie. Yeah, we definitely couldn't vlog all the time. I see that Sean and Steph IRL are in the house. Hi, Sean and Steph. If you guys aren't familiar with Sean and Steph, they are adorable cruise vloggers and you need to go check them out. They just got off Norwegian Bliss and had a really great cruise. So please check out their channel. Super awesome. Um, Anne said, did your ankle swell? Mom's ankle swelled on an airplane. No. If anything, my ankles would have swollen only from having more cocktails than I normally do, Anne, but not from the flights. I was doing okay. Okay, let's see here. Um, ha ha ha, Skywalkers, the force is strong with them. Yes, Skywalkers was great on this cruise, guys. They still do have a Skywalkers. It's kind of the usual type of situation where it's up a big escalator and it was really cool. All right, let's see if we have any other questions. If I've missed your question, now's the time to type it in, everybody, because we're gonna be signing off in just a couple of minutes. Oh. Bonnie Carnival sent you a full refund when you had to cancel your cruise due to illness. They should. They should refund you if you're sick. That should be the way that it goes. I don't know if that's the normal policy that cruise lines have if you get sick, but I sure believe that, that they should do that. Oh, Yi Chang said, how did you know to get a custard apple? This is a great story, Yi Chang. So after our excursion in Taiwan, we were waiting for our bus and there was a beautiful little market there. We were walking through the market and um, one of the stall, uh, one of the, the vendors, she had just this beautiful display of fruits and we stood and we were sort of looking at her um, display. And she didn't speak a lick of English, but she grabbed a custard apple and she brought it over to us and she kept nodding like, do you want to try it? Do you want to try it? And she pulled the little things off the top. And my husband's like, mommy, I want that. Can I have it? I'm like, yeah, I don't know what the heck it is, but you can have it. I really didn't know what it was, but I knew it was edible and it looked good. Kind of looked like an artichoke. 
we didn't even know what it was called at the time. And so um, she told us how much money to give her and we did it. And my son stuck the spoon in the custard apple and ate it. And, and we still didn't know what it was called um, until we got on the bus and had someone translate it for us. But it was, it was lovely. It tasted really good. Sometimes there were seeds in there. He didn't like the seeds, but he just spit them out. But yeah, it was really fun. So glad that we got to experience that. And you're going on Majestic in 420 days. You're going to love it. And if you're going to be cruising through Asia, my gosh, it is spectacular. I loved it so much. My husband loved it. It was everything he had dreamed it would be, right, honey? It was. It was crazy cool, you guys. This has just this has just given us a taste of international travel, and I really think you're going to be seeing more international travel from us because it was awesome. Okay. <laughs> oh my gosh. Okay. Um, Janet, the flight was about $800 per person. Not bad at all, considering how much, how, how many miles we had to cover. Our flight from Taiwan to LAX was 7,000 miles approximately, I think. So, yeah. Um, Whitney said, how far in advance do you recommend booking your flight before your cruise? You're wanting to get the best deal as early as you possibly can. Whitney, if you put a deposit on that cruise and you know you're going, book it, but try to book it with a non-refundable fare if you can. I mean, excuse me, excuse me. No, no, no. Book it with a refundable fare. Don't book non-refundable fares unless you absolutely have to. It's risky. That's why I like booking with Princess because up until 45 days, it was non it was refundable. Okay. Um, Steven said, uh, how was accessibility for wheelchairs, for wheelchair for the ports? It was pretty darn good, Steven, and Princess does accommodate um, wheelchairs very well. We did not see a huge amount of wheelchairs on this cruise, or scooters for that matter. A few, but not very many. Not very many. Okay. Um, let's see here. Yes, Bonnie, you booked your Island Princess Vancouver Air through Easy Air. Best price. It really is a good price. Yeah, exactly. Hawaii costs 700 these days, right? Um, my favorite cocktail, Anne, was definitely the Beverly Hills iced tea on this cruise. It was good. I didn't, I didn't try as many new cocktails as I wanted to because I kind of stuck with some of my old favorites and I just was not, we just didn't, I didn't drink a ton of them a day. So I didn't want to mix it up too much and risk getting something too sweet that I didn't like. Okay, I think we are going to wrap up now. If I've missed your question, I would definitely um, recommend that you instant message me or direct message me over on Facebook. Stay tuned for an announcement about our next live stream. Thank you for being here today and for listening for most of the time. I know we didn't answer a million questions about general cruise things, but we will come back and do general cruise Q&A. So thanks, you guys. It's so good to be home. This cruise was so wonderful for us. It really restored us. Our energy is so good. I feel like my blood pressure is lower than it was before. We are in love with Japan now. It was so special to experience all of these different countries. And we'll talk more about that through social media as we post some more pictures over the coming weeks. So thank you for being here. Thank you for being patient as I, I felt like I was swaying a little bit here and there. But we appreciate you guys. And until next time, we'll see you on the high seas. Bye-bye. Cruise around the week. <laughs>